operating unit so i guess at this time you are in a pretty much better position to understand what's meant by an operating unit so the bookish definition is that an operating unit is an autonomous organization having business activities corresponding to one or more of these products such as receivables order management payables purchasing and projects operating units are related to a primary ledger so looking at the previous scenarios i have given what is the operating unit here i have written operating unit as a business unit but don't worry about the conventions i have used it's one and the same they are like synonyms so in oracle e business suite it's called as operating unit whereas you go to oracle fusion applications which is another erp launched by oracle it's called as a business unit so you can see there are four operating units in this scenario whereas in this one you see that you have got one two three four five six and seven operating units in total and they lets you segregate the transactions you can create specific roles and responsibilities which can either have access to one operating unit transactions or they can access multiple operating unit related transactions you've got to do multiple setups pertaining to that which is something i've covered in my module called as multi org access control or moac which is where it requires a kind of a security profile to be defined which is where you indicate that that security profile has got access to which all operating unit and then you assign that security profile to a user which will define its access to multiple operating units you can further filter down and go on defining further security and data access policies within your setup so now the next thing is we need to understand the form that is used to define an operating unit within oracle e business suite environment so i'm going to take you to oracle e business suite and in order to define an operating unit you can define it via inventory responsibility so go to inventory which an operations usa responsibility and then navigate to setup organizations and then organizations and here hit the new button and then give a name you've got to give a type over here so optionally you can use a type as operating unit so i guess the best thing is i query an existing operating unit so that it's easier for you to understand i don't want to define a new one at this time so i'm going to go to type and look for operating unit over here i hit the find button it's going to pull out one of the operating units let's say this is vision modeling is one of the operating units so you give the type you give the starting date from which it is valid you associate a location and a location address and this is the main defining factor for the operating unit this type has got no meaning there is no validation done on the type that you give over here but how a operating system operating unit is validated is by this organizational classification you must give operating unit over here and go to others and in others you've got to go and give this operating unit information which is where you specify a number of related information such as what is the primary ledger what is the default legal context and any other requirements such as operating unit short code so the main thing that's important is these two parameters inventory organization you define inventory organizations that represent inventory entities which could be manufacturing facilities it could be warehouses or it could be distribution centers or branch offices in your company once you have defined an inventory organization then you define its associated organizational parameters which are the source for default inventory costing control and movement parameters for an inventory organization 
So the default, as the name says, once you give the defaults, let's say accounting defaults or location specific defaults and so on, then those defaults get gets automatically defaulted or at the transactional level. Now in terms of where the inventory organization lies in a accounting structure. So you can see the first level is legal entity, then you've got a ledger, then you've got an operating unit. Within that operating unit, you define your inventory organization over here. So as I said, it could be a warehouse, it could be a distribution center, it could be a manufacturing facility, or it could be simply a logical distribution center address. And within that, you can define physical warehouses, which is what you call it as sub inventories. So what I have shown you over here, they are nothing but sub inventories within a inventory organization. So in this particular example, our inventory organization is nothing but a logical entity, but it's got an associated address. So in terms of where you define the inventory organization in the system, so let's go back to Oracle applications. It's pretty much the same form. We define so organizations form. If you recall in the starting of this course itself, I have taken you through the definition of organization. That's the entire idea of explaining you because it's very confusing that we use the term organization on and on and it's defined in the same form different kinds of organizations. But what differentiates is the organization classifications, which is different for every different type of organization that you define. Okay, so I'm going to go back to query form here and I'm going to choose the type as say Let's say here, I'm going to say Seattle Manufacturing. It's an inventory organization. Hit the Find button and you can see it's defined as a plant. Okay. As I said, plant is like a manufacturing center, which is a synonym for inventory organization. And within that, you can see the organization classification parameters are different. So it has been classified as an inventory organization and once you have given this information you've got to give a number of parameters which is called as inventory organizational parameters so you reach that by going to others and then these are the parameters you have got to give one by one so start with accounting information which is where you give the information such as this inventory organization all the transactions will go and sit into which ledger so you give the primary ledger the associated legal entity and operating unit once you have given that, then you go and give parameters pertaining to customer or supplier association, which is optional. And then the main information goes and sits into this inventory information here, which will open a big form and it's got mega information over there. So while you are setting up, you've got to give a good thought while you are setting this up. So as you could see, it's got information pertaining to inventory, costing, and the account that gets hit by the kind of transaction you perform in costing for the kind of materials, okay? Then revision, lot, serial, and LPN related information. So LPN stands for license plate numbers and it is usually given to containers. Then ATP pick item sourcing information. So ATP stands for available to promise and this information is usually used in order management then you've got inter-org information so if at all you're planning to do a inter-organization transfer for example you've got two warehouses and you would like to transfer material from one warehouse to another warehouse then these are the account that gets hit then any other accounts you have so you specify over here such as receiving account your PL accounts and other accounts such as clearance or cost various accounts so that's what goes into the inventory parameter information it's a lot of information and you must give a good thought and there is a lot of dependent setup that goes into that such as you've got to set up your chart of accounts over here so that it comes here then likewise you've got to set up your 
costing related information you've got to also define your costing organization and obviously you've got to save the inventory organization first before you can come to this form for giving inventory organization parameters okay so i'm going to close this one i won't go much into the detail of that the last part of this parameter is receiving related information and it will open it in a html form which is where you give information pertaining to receiving when it comes from let's say suppliers or it could be customer returns so that information goes and sits over here so the defaults that you gave over here will get defaulted on the receiving and return related forms okay so so here there are a number of accounting information over here which gets hit when you do the receiving because obviously receiving hits the inventory valuation and it requires an accounting transaction more about the inventory organization related parameters receiving related parameters i have explained you in my course in release 12 i oracle inventory fundamentals as well as oracle purchasing fundamentals courses sub inventory so what are sub inventory i think it's self explanatory by the name itself so sub inventories are unique physical or logical separations of material inventory such as raw inventory finished goods or defective materials so within a warehouse you maintain multiple sub inventory locations and each of those locations you can give a unique numbering or unique identification code or a unique name for example for raw material sub inventory you can call it as ri for finished goods sub inventory you can call it as fg and for defective materials you can call it as dm for returns you can call it as rm and so on so it will uniquely identify the location under which these goods would be lying within your warehouse again you can sub further subdivide a sub inventory based on locators so sub inventory could be a big place let's say it could be 600 meters by 600 meters wide so within that you can, you may have aisles you may have racks and so on so for that you have got to define locators which is where you clearly identify a locator under which a specific item is lying all materials within an organization is held in a sub inventory therefore you must define at least one sub inventory in addition to that sub inventory since it stores item and when you transact the item valuation gets affected right so that is the reason why at a sub inventory level as well you give the accounting information so any sub inventory transfer in or out affects the accounting as well and affects the valuation of the goods that you are storing in your warehouse so it's important to have a look at the sub inventory information as well so i'm going to go back to oracle applications and here i'm going to go to inventory responsibility within that go to navigate to setup organizations and then sub inventories and then hit the open button you've got to choose an inventory organization so let's say we choose the seattle manufacturing organization which is what we discussed in the previous movie and here you can define multiple sub inventories within that so as you could see a number of sub inventories are already defined so as an example a finished goods sub inventory you can hit the open button to see its detailed information so a lot of information goes into that the most important is what type of a sub inventory it is whether it's a storage sub inventory or it's just a receiving sub inventory and then whether you would like to track the quantity and whether it's asset sub inventory or not there are a number of other default that goes into that then other important thing is the accounting part so the accounting gets defaulted automatically from the inventory organization but you can always override that while you are creating it and as i said within a sub inventory you can define a number of locators so as an example if you click on this locators button you can see the different locators defined in a sub inventory and within each locator you can define a item 
that goes and sits there. Again, more about this I have explained you in my course in Release 12i Oracle Inventory Fundamentals. So feel free to take that course if you like. So that is the concept of sub-inventory within a enterprise structure. So if I go back to our business scenario, so where our sub-inventory would be? So if you look at that, this is a distribution center within that you've got a warehouse. Within this warehouse, you will have sub-inventories. You know, it could be raw materials, finished goods, returns, defective materials, and so on, identified by a unique code. Human Resources Organization As the name suggests, you define Human Resources Organization to capture your employee information and then to further capture their payroll related information. So any organization that has got the HR organization classification enabled have employees assigned to it. So what does it mean? If you go back to the organization definitions window, it is referring to this place. So HR organization, did you see that? As long as this parameter or this classification is enabled, this organization can be called as a human resources organization. So if you click on this and go to others, you can provide a number of information pertaining to your human resources, such as you can see the work schedule, the workday information, the costing information, the payslip information, reporting information, time management information, and so on. So at this time, I'm not going to go into this detail of that. But once you have defined your human resources organization, then you can potentially use that in your human resources and payroll modules. So let's say first one responsibility by the name of human resources vision enterprise. So within that you can go, this is the responsibility under which you can define your employees. So this is the place wherein you define your employees. Okay. And then you've got an organization chart so you can see so, you know, while you're defining that, you also assign your employees to a human resources organization. So, it involves a good amount of setup. So, that is something which we'll explore it later in our other courses pertaining to human resources management system and payroll.